What is up, Sista friends? Welcome to another episode of Heart to Heart with myself, Coach Emily. Today we have a very special guest, my hairstylist, Amy, but Amy is more than just a hairstylist. She is I don't even, there's like so many words to describe Amy. She's like, I feel like I know a famous person by knowing Amy and she's just wise and wonderful and joyful and smart. And so I wanted to bring her on the podcast today because, um, well, a plethora of reasons, but her story just that I've gotten to know through my time with her has been amazing. So Amy, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you. What a, already, I feel like you had a sweet little introduction there. Um, and so, okay, so I am a single mother. I am 43 years old and I have owned, I've, I've been doing, I've been in the hair industry for 23 years. And um, so when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I was young, 20. And so I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I figured I better do something more than waitressing. Mm -hmm. And, um, I decided to go to hair school because I thought, well, that's something that probably will take about a year. And I can just do that while I figure out what I want to do with my life. And little did I know that that was, I was going to get so much life out of this career because it's shifting and evolving and um, it's creative, but the sky's the limit. And I feel like it just keeps, you know, doors just keep opening up. And um, so I'm grateful for my daughter getting pregnant so young because I was directionless and she saved my life. She gave me direction. Uh, how old were you? 18, you said? I was 20 when oh, I had 20. Mm -hmm. 20. Wow. And so, if you follow Amy, her and her daughter are so close even to this day. Yeah. It's amazing. So I didn't we, know you were, go ahead. We always say like we've grown up together. And a lot of times I think mm -hmm. um, young moms can feel guilty about that. Um, but she, she really loves it and appreciates it. And um, it's, it's really special. Mm -hmm. It is. It is from the outside. I don't, I've never even met her. And I'm like, I stalk her Instagram all the time. I'm just like, what are the, what are Amy and Olivia up to? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's kind of like what I feel like. So yeah. you got started in here when you were 20 and, you know, being a hairstylist, me and Amy were just, cause I literally saw Amy yesterday, <laughs> had my hair done. We were talking about this yesterday. Being a hairstylist is like being an entrepreneur. I mean, you have to build a clientele. You have to, you know, keep those clients. And now she owns a beautiful salon in Fort Collins. So like when you were first starting out, what was that like for you? You know, what's interesting is I think my son and I talk about this call. He calls it raptor blood. <laughs> and, and it's like, you have it you have it inside of you and you just feel it. And so I think there was no question of, you know, can I do this? Mm -hmm. um, there are questions of that now sometimes, you know, like, what am I doing? But in general, I feel like building a clientele, it can seem exciting, intimidating. Um, it's a whirlwind of emotions, Yeah, but... I was very ten tenacious about, about it when I was, you know, 20, 22, 21, 22. Yeah. And I think at different stages of your life, when you're having to like build and rebuild it, it morphs and evolves and changes. But um, you're right. Even though I worked for a salon and they had clients coming in, they kind of had a base mm -hmm. that I, I could feed off of. Yeah. Um, but if you're an entrepreneur, eventually you want to go do, do something of your own. And you don't even sometimes know why. You're yeah. like, why do I want to do my own thing? Yeah. So you kind of had this urge to fly free from that salon? Yeah. Where did you I go? Just, I just knew there was always something more. Mm. Like there's never a ceiling on my, there's never a cap on my potential. 
Yeah. Which is beautiful and also hard. Yes. Well, and Amy, guys, is a 3-5 manifesting generator, correct? 3-5. Mm-hmm. So Amy is a double whammy of experimenting and playing with life and going after things. And I ho- hope, I wish all of you could meet her. Maybe one day when we have like a retreat or something, you'll get to be there or something. But um, the power that you have in your space and the things that you do just screams the manifesting generator because Amy is so multifaceted. She does hair, but she also has this like super spiritual side to her. And you also have this creative like style and the way you live your life. So kind of talk about like what that has been like for you as a business owner, as a mom, all the things. Mm. So being multifaceted, Mm -hmm. um, it's, I, I, I love having freedom. I'm also a Sagittarius. So like freedom, play adventure. Um, luckily my kids really, really love watching me open up and try new things. And they're very supportive and even traveling. I love traveling. And so I think, um, I really, I I appreciate having this um, foundation here in Fort Collins, Colorado, but I also love traveling all across the country and all across the world and meeting other stylists and salon owners and entrepreneurs in different areas that really feeds life into me. And then different cultures and different styles and New York, I'll go to New York fashion week. Right. And then like a week later I was in India on a yoga retreat. Yeah. And so sometimes it feels like I'm all over the place, but I also love being all over the place. Yeah. So how do you feel like that has shaped she bang in and just like where you are at at now? Yeah. So I created a clip on bang company. I'm wearing them right now. And, um, they're called, it's called she bang in. So that happened in my basement, like eight years ago, I was, I wanted bangs, but I didn't want to cut my own because I knew I would not want them in a week, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, not to deal with them. And so I just decided to create my own. And, um, when I went out to dinner with friends that night, we were having wine and I just was feeling a little comfortable and saucy and cheeky and was like, she banging. And then I was like, Oh, that's actually cute. But I didn't take it seriously for probably four years. Mm. And then I noticed my clients kept saying, I think I want bangs. And I noticed it was a constant theme for women. Like they wanted them, but they didn't want to commit. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to actually go forward with this idea. I didn't think it was, I thought it was this kind of a cheesy little idea, but um, once I started going with it, it's been four years in the making and it's just now being birthed. And sometimes when I get in my head and I think I don't, I, it's hard for me to take seriously because I'm such a deep hearted woman that it feels surfacey, but that's what I'm learning is like, you can be a deep, such a deep soul, but also love fashion and beauty. And, you know, it can be both. They can come together. Yes. And so now it's exciting because doors are opening up all over the country and eventually and Paris. And so, yeah. So, um, and it's fun to see people get so excited and light up and, and want them, but also want to carry them in their space. And it's, it's fun to see something be birthed that I really didn't take super seriously at one point. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Amy, she's very humble, but Amy was literally just in New York fashion week, had a model in New York fashion week, walk out with her bangs on that Amy got like I'm gonna cry because I'm just like so proud of you like walk out and her own creation out into the world and then she's going to Paris Fashion Week with her bangs like guys you all know who listens to podcasts entrepreneurs like that's a big deal right it's like it's just such a cool thing and I think what you said of like you started this thing and you're like we'll see how it goes, like kind of thing. And 
obviously eight years is a long freaking time, right? And you've been pursuing this and pursuing this. And yeah, eight years later, now it's like, now you're in New York Fashion Week. Now you're in Paris and you're having these salons being like, I think I do want some of these bangs in our studio. Obviously, Amy, along those eight years, there have been hard days, hard times. You and I have talked about these things before. What do you think was like, what do you, or what do you feel was the, what got you through all of that? Like, how did you continue to persevere and, you know, what kind of steps did you take to continue to pursue this? That's a great question. I would say there was, a, it was like perfect timing, sprinkling of it throughout when I was just like, I'm exhausted. I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm burnt out. Somebody will come into my life that either has something that I need for, you know, like a, a business coach mm -hmm. or, or some, a client, you know, I'll get reached out to from a salon or clients that are like, Amy, are your bangs ready yet? Or, um, I also remember I, I want to see something through mm. because if it, if something is put in our path, it's for a reason, not just the learning lessons along the way, but it's like, I have to see what's on the other side of this mountain. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I even equate it to like work when you're working out. Yeah. And you're just like, I can't do one more burpee. <laughs> and then you do it. And, yeah. and then you're like, oh, I didn't die. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I'm not dying. <laughs> and I really, I'm excited to see what's on the other side. Yeah. And I think you said something really beautiful too in your, you know, before too, of like, not just the perseverance, right? And that's like that raptor blood a little bit. I love that saying that your little Tony hat, you know, that's such like a cool saying and such like a 15 year old thing to say, right? Like <laughs> raptor blood. But yeah. Um, this like dichotomy, you know, where, you know, as a female fitness or as a female entrepreneur, you almost like dim yourself because it's like, oh, it's too much to have like the fashion and the beauty and the style and to be taken seriously working in the industry that you work in. How did that show up for you? Or how did, did like, how did you work through that? Cause I know a lot of women almost like feel like it's bad to like care about fashion or a way they look or things like that you know like it's almost like humanized a little bit so I'd be curious what you thought mm, I'm glad you asked because I would say that's probably that's something that I've thought of a lot throughout this process because it seems like for a while I had two different circles of friends I had my you know, hairstylist friends who were in the beauty and fashion world and don't think a second thought about spending $2,500 on a purse yeah. and feeling fierce and loving it. And I like vibed with that. And then I also have a, had a group of, have a group of friends that are very like spiritual hippie, grow their own food, you know, like don't do anything really. And, and it almost felt like, why can't we come together in this? It doesn't have to be this or this. And I almost feel like I'm a bridge to that gap because I love both. I, I love being barefoot, being on the earth and growing. I don't grow my own food, but I would love to do that. It tastes better. And I love high-end fashion and the creative artistry that comes in that. And so funny enough, the I've sat with um, our brand for a while and being like, I feel like when you put on bangs or you change up your look and you elevate your fashion outer style, it, it like evokes and unlocks something inside of you, which I equate to for me is like this divine feminine power that I have inside of me. And it's in there, it's in all of us. And sometimes different things will unlock that. Yeah. So no, I are a huge bridge in that gap of like I mean you're stunning but you also like dress so fun and cool and you and you have really like 
intentional tattoos that are like your specific style there. And then like when you walk into Amy's salon, there is Amy-ness just everywhere, right? Like it, you can tell that like there's so much intentionality to it. And I think that it does invoke something, you know, I can resonate a lot. Like I've been working on like my style for so long. I like fell into this like gym rat aesthetic where I only wore gym clothes. My hair was only in a ponytail and I never wore makeup because I thought I had to, had to look that way. And I think like women like you are really helpful for on female entrepreneurs because like the way you dress does evoke like this power and this sense of like, this is who I am. Do you resonate with that? Yeah, because I think we were talking about this yesterday, but it's like, we can look, we do. We look at social media daily, especially if you're an entrepreneur, of course you do. Yeah. And so what you, what I find myself doing is seeing all these other women that are killing it. And I'm looking at how they're doing things and I'm inspired by them. And I'm, I'm like, we can lose ourselves in thinking, Ooh, I'm look at what they're doing. I'm going to do what they're doing. And although we can learn from each other, it's different when you're like, you lose yourself. And, and so I think, you know, there's this huge conversation around authenticity. And so I think when you put on some bangs or you put on this killer outfit and you just, whatever that looks like, and it moves you in this way that you, you feel more confident or it, it really, what that is, is you're, it's unlocking your true authentic self. Through your expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, and you can switch up your look. We don't have to put ourselves in a box and say, this is my job. This is my look. This is how I'm supposed to be. I actually, the reason I overpack for every trip I go on is because I never know how I'm going to feel that day. And I, I get dressed based off of like, how am I feeling today? And I don't know if that has anything to do with my human design or anything like that, but <laughs> it probably does. But, you know, I don't want to put um, limitations on my potential yeah. and it even comes down to as simple things as what am I going to wear today? And because really what you're asking is how do I feel and how am I showing up? Yes. It's like embodiment mm -hmm. of your energy, right? Like, like you putting on the bang, right? I've seen Amy with her bangs, without her bangs. Literally yesterday she was dressed up like she was going to like a dinner party or something. You had this beautiful like black cocktail dress on, the big bun, no bangs. And today she's given her boho -y vibes with the bang, the earrings. And each one, it's like you're embodying different pieces of yourself. And I think what is so important because um, most of us, if we're working on our conditioning, you may think, and this is what came to mind when you were saying that, I think people don't think depth can exist with the beauty right like you think that the beauty means shallow when actually like amy is the full embodiment of herself through her expression externally is that is that what you're saying exactly but it's not easy to get there right so like how did you get to that point of like accepting yourself fully and being able to express it out yeah it that's actually so true because for some interesting reason, people have a tendency to tell me, um, give me a lot of feedback <laughs> and they'll give me feedback on like, well, why are you wearing this? And is that really like, you know, I get questioned a lot about the choices I make. And so I would, I would question it like, oh, am I not being authentic or am I being really superficial that I love to just, because I, people would make little comments like, oh, I know you like to be fancy, but it felt a little like, yeah, they didn't, they weren't sure if they loved it. And so I real, I started to realize like when you get other people's opinions or judgments, it's really their own, what they're wrestling with. And so once I started to recognize that that's what it was, I was like, you know what? I think I am just going to 
it felt more comfortable for me just to be me and remember that what they're going through has nothing to do with me. Yeah. And so I would sit with it a lot too. I would, um, you know, meditate or take baths or walks and, and, and look at other people's styles on Instagram and that I was drawn to. And I kind of just started trying on a lot of shoes and a oh. lot of outfits and trying things on and be like, what, what does feel authentic to me? Yeah. Who, it, it, because you, it's really a journey of finding out who you are. Yeah. Because no, that's so true. And it's so interesting because it kind of goes circling back to like what you said originally about how you define authenticity. Cause we do like go online, see what she's doing. And I'm like, okay, she wears this, she does this and it works for her because that's her, right? Like, and you being fully you is going to work for you, right? Like even she banging is authentic to Amy, right? Like I couldn't invent she banging. Like, you know, like if I imitated that, it imitated that it probably wouldn't hit as hard as it hits for you because it is Amy. It's like today, Amy wanted to bang it and it, and it looks like it looks so good. Right. And so I think it's this remembering of like, we have, you can't be authentic by copying someone else, but maybe you try it on, figure out what is about it that you like and you don't like. And you're like, actually, you know what? I do like this sometimes, but actually for me, it looks like this. And I think like as entrepreneurs trying to be more authentic is something we all know we need to do, but it's almost like we're lost on how to get there. So I think this is like a really cool way to look at it. Yeah, you're right. And finding, um, starting to ask yourself a lot of questions, I think is when you're, if you're getting to know somebody, you ask them questions. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling disconnected from yourself, that's when I start asking myself questions. Yeah. What kind of questions would you ask? Um, I, st- I think I start off by going through like, how much have you been sleeping? Okay. Have yeah. you, what are you eating? Mm-hmm. Are you working out? Are you doing anything that's playful and fun? You know, like it's, it's a, a series of questions that I start to go through just if I feel disconnected from myself. Then once I go through those questions, then I start saying, okay, what does Amy want right now? Yeah. What, what is going to make, get you back into your center? Yeah. Because we all are very busy. And when you're an entrepreneur, it's not a nine to five. You go in, you do your job, you come home. It's, it's consuming. And I, I honestly think it's really funny how people are like this, this idea, a concept of life work balance. It's really interesting. I almost feel like everybody wants to separate the two, but yeah. for when you're an entrepreneur, you get to choose, um, you know, what you do. Right. So melding the two together for me has didn't, then you don't resent one or the other. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's such a good point. And like, because with energetic scheduling, people want it to be separate and we're almost like trying to create some barriers of separation, right? Because like you do need time for you, but I think the word balance is incorrect. It's almost like we got to use the, like, I love yin and yang. I feel like you can use it in the literally all the scenarios of life, but yin and yang is like, when there's more black, there's just a little less white. And when there's more white, there's just a little more black. And it's this ebb and flow, Mm -hmm. not a scale where it's like up very like cut and dry. That's what balance sounds like to me. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I would say that feels masculine. Yeah. And so like life is ebbs and flows, like everything in life is an ebb and a flow. Like, and so I love that you said that because getting one, getting back to yourself, you have to know what's even going on with yourself and like the basics of sleep, water, time alone. Like those are all important things, but also how are you like navigating your day to day and like giving yourself grace and discipline where it's needed? Cause it is just this, it's not always going to be like, well, it's five o'clock done right today. It might be seven o'clock, eight o'clock tomorrow. It might be three o'clock. Like, it's just never going to be this like perfect Lego 
matrix kind of thing? I would say something I'm learning to do is in the morning, I, I really do love checklists. And I used to make my checklists knowing that I wasn't going to get everything done. And then I would feel like a failure at the end of the day, you know? Um, and so now what I do is I write a checklist and I put in the key important things that like have crucially have to get done today. These are, you know, have to get done. And then I fill it in with things that I know I'm going to feel like I can do, the, I can accomplish these. Yeah. I, and then I feel good about the day when I'm like, I did, I did what I knew was crucial throughout the day. And if there's bonus things, then I feel like I'm winning. Yes, I love even that. Small thing, like I washed my car and that wasn't even on my list. <laughs> I'm winning. I am nailing this day. <laughs> yes. I love that. And it's almost, it's just like giving yourself wiggle room too right because like as an entrepreneur and you probably had that season of your life as you know building building your business and all of that of like drilling yourself in on all these things that have to get done instead of giving yourself the time and wiggle room to get them done when you couldn't get them done kind of thing yeah exactly I try to leave blocks of time where I have um I don't want to call it free time but it's like what would you call it? I call it available time mm. because I think free time gives us a weird pass and you almost will fill it with stupid things. Sometimes we're yeah. like, I have this available time. Like what do I want to do with this intentional available time? You know what I mean? I, I like that. Cause you could be like, I'm going to go get a juice or a smoothie, you know, or is there something else like on my checklist that's tomorrow that I could get done today? Or is there something about what is the best value yes. of that time? But I try to leave cushions. Yeah. Of cushions is great. That's what I was looking for. Where, yeah. I would say I try to leave cushions of time throughout a day so that I don't feel suffocated. Yeah. And that's ma very manifesting generator of you kind of thing. Like, <laughs> like yeah. needing, the cushions because you're kind of like I don't know where this task is going to take me and I want enough time to do that thing or like if something were to pop up like if you got the impulse of like Olivia I need you to come over right now I have a perfect like photo opportunity like you kind of those cushions give you that available opportunity mm -hmm. and I want to be fully present yeah wherever I'm at and so cushions of time also leaves room for presence. if some, mm -hmm. I have this um I'm I would be curious your thoughts because I was thinking I was so the other day I was like how can we help more people feel authentic and I, Amy mm -hmm. you're one of the most authentic people I've ever met and you're pre you bring a lot of presence to every situation like when I'm in your chair I don't feel like you're thinking about other things you're just in you're just there with me doing the chair, you know, doing my hair, talking to me about everything under the sun that we talk about. And I was thinking the other day, I was like, I feel like the road to authenticity is like awareness, massive amounts of presence, expression, which we kind of touched on, and then embodiment. Like, would you agree with that? Yes. Like massive amounts of awareness of like, what, what do I feel? Who am I? Right. And then presence and like you're so good at presence was that something like you've been, always been good at or it's something you had to cultivate that's a really good question I feel like I lost myself for a period of my life it took you know some time but if I think about little girl Amy and the woman I am right now um I would say I have I have that and also I've refined it. Hmm. What does that mean? I think um, I have so much to say and I feel so much. And I've learned the value in like listening. So that has helped me to be more present because, because the energy I have, it's so like, <laughs> and so like for me to be more present, it's good for me to calm down and 
really hear somebody else because I genuinely want to hear them. But I get so excited <laughs> that I have a tendency to like over talk or over share or over talk over somebody. Mm. Um, and I've learned the, you know, just the beautiful exchange of like being, you know, being present and listening. And then that makes it easier for me. I love that. You're really good at it, I would say. And so like with all this time, I mean, you know, I know that, I mean, technically you're older than me, but I feel like we're the same, we're like the same yeah. age, right? Like energetically, but you've done a lot of beautiful work in your life to get to this point. And like all these great things are happening with the bangs, the salon, you, like all this stuff. I would love like your opinion or your perspective, advice, whatever comes to you for the other entrepreneurs that like can't see the forest to the trees that are like, were you five years ago? Right. Cause like, and also talk about if you can, like how even right now with all these good things happening, what that looks like and feels like for you. Like what advice I would give them? Yeah. Like, or like perspective, right. Because I know so many So many women are like, they want, they're like, you know, they would, maybe they would look at you and be like, wow, everything's working out for her. Everything's just like falling into place for her right now. Like, why isn't that happening for me? And like, it's been a long journey to get, I mean, Amy used to do hair in her house in your basement, right? Yeah. For 14 years. And it, it's, it was, it, I think it's so easy to get caught up in seeing other successful entrepreneurs and like where they're at now and like not seeing the full ice iceberg. You get where I'm, where I'm going with it kind of. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, um, when I was there, I did not expect to be there for 14 years. And when I decided to step back and I am an extrovert and I, I feed off of other energies Mm -hmm. like that, you know, and so I wouldn't get that with my client, but I also didn't have the creative collaboration of a team with me. And so a lot of times I felt like I was dying and that I I actually had this, um, reading done by some human design gals a few years ago. And they were like, what are you up to? Your energy is like Oprah energy, like big ass energy. What are you doing? And I was like, nothing, you know, I just felt like what I'm not doing anything. And that was, I resonated with it, what they said, because I felt like I had all of this energy to, to give or use. And it felt a little bit like squelch. And I kept thinking, I know the timing is coming when I'm, I won't be in this space. Like I knew it was coming, but it wasn't quite time yet. And that's a hard place to be is the in-between. As, yeah. as when you're a visionary too, and you see where you want to go and you feel like nothing's happening. Something that's literally just kind of came together recently is like saying, what are the 20 things that are not working in my business right now and writing them out and then writing like action steps, like what can you do? And then you say, I'm going to do one a week. I'm going to focus. And what are the top three things that are pressing? Like that if I did these three things, this would really affect my daily life and the rhythm of how my workflow is. And so you start off by taking one of those, you do that the first week and then second and third. And then they're like, in just a few months, you're going to be blown away by what you've accomplished. Because I think what happens is I get decision fatigue and then I'll start swirling because there's so many things to do. And even when I'm doing my work and by my work, I mean like praying, meditating, taking my baths, like physically and spiritually and mentally taking care of myself. I'm actually really good at it. I'm, and I love it, but I can even be doing that and having like, it feels like an ocean wave coming at me. And I'm like, I'm going to drown. And, and, and I don't really know. So then that's when I'm like, oh, but if I take five steps back in the sand, then I'll have time to think about it. And then I can write my, write it all out because if it it stays up in here, then it just swirls and swirls and sends me into a tailspin. But if I get it out, yeah, I'm a verbal processor. So if there's nobody around to be the, The the 
yeah, this I was going to say whipping post is probably how they feel sometimes. They're like, oh, this is a lot. Um, <laughs> if I don't have that, then it's like, I've even thought about, I think I'm going to set, I haven't even put this into action yet, but I've been thinking about it. I'm like, I'm going to set up my phone and record myself talking yeah. and saying, these are all the things that are going on and then hear it back. And then, cause if I hear myself talk, that's, that's really what I'm doing when I'm processing with people talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's like w- what I'm hearing, you know, besides the, the, the journey you've been through to get to this point. And like you said, in the beginning, like there's still more to come. Like this is just a, the starting point of all of this growth, but is this point of like, for all of you that are listening that struggle or feel like, how do I get where Amy's going? Or how do I make it? How do I make it? Why am I not making it? I hope you're hearing what she's saying. She's constantly finding ways to understand how she works best and understand her thoughts best and make decisions best and take care of herself best so that she can show up the way she needs to. What Because business is going to, as the Gen Z say, they make everything a verb. Business will business, right? Like businessing. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's going to do its thing. There's going to be hard months, right? There's going to be, Amy's not always going to like, I mean, you know, she's an entrepreneur like y'all, like she's going to have hard months too. Right. But she is doing the, all these little things to, to continue to show up the best Amy that she can and everything else flourishes because you take care of you. That's what I'm hearing. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I would say take care of me and tune in. Mm. Like, what do you want to tune in? I I would say I tune in to listen again, asking questions because if you're having a bad, you know, like a numbers are down or things aren't working or your systems are, you know, not cooperating, and you're like, I don't know what. To, that's when you start swirling, and so it's like you need to find your center. Yeah. And, um, when you find your center, then you're a lot more, you're tuning in, you're paying attention, you're aware of, um, your thoughts, but you're also aware of then of who comes into your life, mm-hmm. a coach or, um, just something that you'll hear a teaching and you'll really listen because you're tuned in. You're, you're asking for solutions. Yes. And you're, and you're finding them because you're being open, right? You're not operating from this place of contraction, right? I think a lot of women that I know that are entrepreneurs, they're always like contracting because mm-hmm. like, it's scary. I mean, it's, it is, it, you know, Amy and I would be lying if we didn't say we get scared being business owners, right? Yes. Oh yeah. Like it's so uh, normal. Mm-hmm. And I'll openly admit that too, you know, like you want to, I, I think vulnerability is one of the most attractive things when, you know, when a human is vulnerable and honest. And so even when you're vulnerable and honest with yourself, because sometimes I think we have to, you know, pick up our bootstraps and nope, we've got this like toughen up, but that's actually very masculine to do. Right. And so if we step, I'm, I'm desiring to step more into my feminine and move in business in a feminine way which is really difficult because I think a lot of business from hundreds of years ago has been run masculine, linear. These are systems and these are, you know, follow these guidelines, which we need. It's great to have that foundational skeleton backbone structure. And then also we need the fluidity and to be able to flow. Like you said, it's like, it's going to flow. And so don't, if, if we're not contracting and resisting it, it's almost like it's a contra- like a contraction pushes you through to the next space. You need it, but you have to release, right? Like, yeah, I think we're going through when we're feeling, I'm just having this realization when we're feeling frustrated or angry or things aren't working, it's because it's a growing pain. Uh, it's painful when we're feeling like this is painful. I am not enjoying this. And I love this, but why am I not enjoying it? It's painful because that's, that's an opportunity to be like, yeah, it's time for that next growth, you know, and, and we're, we're resisting it. And that's when we get contracted. 
and and not realizing like this is pretty graphic but like that could I just literally think of birth that's all I just thought that's just all that came in my mind like your mom has to be in pain to release you out of her body yeah and I mean moms are badass as it is but like think about that. Like you are a woman owning a business. You have this contraction. Think of that visual. You're, you, it, you can't, you're pushing something out. Something mm-hmm. clearly needs to get out, but you're so caught up in the pain of the contraction that you are not seeing like the full picture of like what is actually happening here. This has to occur in order for you to level up, in order for you to flourish, in order for abundance to come in, this has to exist. And that's back to that like, yin and yang as well like there's a flow to these things and the the masculine is beautiful yes it's needed but like amy said the feminine's going to happen whether you like it or not and if you can't move with it you're just going to be stuck that's exactly it so if you find yourself saying that see that's what i mean like pay attention to the word i'm wanting to pay more attention to the words that are coming out of my mouth i'm frustrated i'm stuck i'm overwhelmed i'm burnt out like our bodies are trying to tell us something, but it's like autopilot. We're just like little parrots. We're used yes. to just seeing these things that we're saying. And then we're not sitting down going, wait a minute. I think I said today 30 times I'm frustrated. So what am I frustrated about? So I feel like those are the pain points. That's the pain talking. Yes. So the pain is pointing us. There's a purpose for our pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you have to have pain to be an entrepreneur. It's just part of it. Uh, I, um, oh, that was, that was so good. I'm going to, that's gonna be a perfect clip right there. Yes. I, I know we're running out of time, but I have one more question um, uh, okay. uh, because you, I know you may not feel like it sometimes, but from the outside looking in, Amy's a three, five, so three fives feel like they're messy and like on a roller coaster and everybody else is like, can I, can I get on the roller coaster? Like your roller coaster looks so cool. And, um, and she's a mom and he's three kids. Okay. <laughs> I think like, I would just love your wisdom for my mom entrepreneurs out there because like, you know, a pressure that I don't know as a mom. And I think like you just say beautiful things all the time about how you handle that. So um, yeah, can you just speak to that a little bit? Mm, Yeah, so I do, I feel like um, as a mom that's operating a business, you definitely want to be present wherever you're at. And I try my best to stay ahead of the, the week or the month, looking at the calendar, I'm constantly looking at the calendar, like, what have they got going on? What have I got going on? And I can do, I try to do that. That's like the masculine. I'm setting the framework for the schedule for my work and for my kids, because those are my two most important things in my life. And so once I lay out the groundwork for how things are going to look, I also remember that there's going to be a fluidity and I'm teaching my kids that too, as, as I'm moving through this, that's what I'm showing them and teaching them like how life has ebbs and flows and we're going to be disappointed. And I may be late to pick you up one day because I ran late at work or whatever. And instead of, instead of taking all the guilt on, because mom guilt is a thing, a conversation, you know, that's a phrase that people say a lot instead of take, I used to do that a lot. And then I would live in like this place of anxiety and failure. And like, I was, I couldn't keep up. And so now I feel like by getting ahead of it, instead of being ahead of it, I'm in it. And I'm like, I'm going to communicate as best as I can to my kids, to everybody. Like, this is the schedule. This is what we're doing. And then when something happens, I'm just, I, I try, I remind myself to remain calm. I'm like, just remain calm because if you're calm, they'll be calm. And just remind them like, I know I didn't want to be late because you're so important to me. Um, And I'm, we're all a work in progress and I'm going to have grace for you when you're late. And when you're late, I'll totally understand. So I think communicating, um, staying soft 
And that's the beautiful part of like the feminine flow of, and that's what's helped me not to feel so anxious or mom guilt. I don't know if that makes any sense. It does make sense. Just allowing the space, mm -hmm. allowing the space. Like as a mom, you, I, I see from the outside, but for moms that are entrepreneurs, they don't give themselves the space for that. It's like, if it's not perfect, I must be a bad mom or I'm, I'm I, I, like, I just think of a couple of my friends that have kids and they just are constantly feeling judged. And like, I'm like, nobody knows, nobody, nobody's at your house with you. Nobody knows that you, your child's nap couldn't go down for a nap. So you had to change up your schedule. Nobody knows that, right? Like give yourself that space to be human. Have, yeah. And have that softness. And I think that was really powerful because like people need permission to, to do those things. When they give themselves permission and they're soft and they're communicating that to their kids, it's really cool because you're, you're help, helping out in that, you know, soften things in that moment, but you're also training them to not, because you know what, the, these are conditioned responses that we have been taught in America. Yeah. <laughs> really. It's like the rat race. And so it's really interesting. I think we're in a time right now where entrepreneurs are, the, it's shifting, which is why I love what you're doing so much oh, with okay. an energetic, you know, timing and, and entrepreneurship and business. Because when I feel like what you help people do is tune in. Mm -hmm. And so when you're tuning in and you're making decisions based off of that, then you are not getting swept up into the rat race of like what it's supposed to look like and be like as a, and look at all these badass moms that are out there rocking these businesses, which is true. They can, you know, what's the most important thing I've noticed as a single mother operating businesses is support goes a long way, but support doesn't always just come knocking on our door. Sometimes it does. Um, sometimes you like cultivate that. And by reaching out to other women, mothers, and then coming alongside each other. Yes. Instead of feeling like we're all alone, chasing something and then judging yeah. ourselves for all these things. Like, even if you don't have kids, you kind of do that too. Like, you know, we kind of like put ourselves alone on these islands of life and, and trying to reach something and judging ourselves if it doesn't look the way other people have their setup or whatever and um have you're right support doesn't come knocking on the door you have to like go out ask for it create it call it i mean amy's doing that right now she's starting a women's circle because she knows all of us are like alone on our islands sometimes and you need support and you need people to give you permission and say hey you're not crazy <laughs> don't gaslight yourself like you're not crazy for feeling this way about this thing like there's just so many levels to it and I think that you I know you're not perfect but you do such a good job of trying to show up in your life with intentionality and like yeah. this and you care about everything that you do I mean things are beautiful but like it's more than the bangs. Like you're sending a message when you do my hair, it's not just hair. It's like, like the best conversation ever. And you, you know, it makes me feel good. So there's just like, I think you guys can take a lot from what Amy has said today. She's so wise because she's done this for a really long time. And, um, did you have anything like last things you wanted to say, whatever, anything you want, this is your episode. Thank you. I think, um, something that has been that's something that has stuck with me that I heard the other day and it's not probably the first time I heard it maybe it's just the way I heard it is um how we view failure and like we feel like we have to be so perfect in how we do everything and show up like be a mom perfect mom and be a perfect business owner and when when we fail or like we fall short then you know it's like doomsday or that's when we, it could be on just the right day and we want to throw the towel in, but really those are learning opportunities. And I heard her, this woman say this the other day, like failure is, is how obviously like it's one of the ways, the biggest ways we learn. Wow. And so if we could all just 
maybe like remind each other and, cha and challenge each other to like in those moments when we're feeling the pain of failure that we actually get curious mm. and ask questions. Why do I feel this way? Oh, I haven't slept or much or, oh, it's, it's because I'm afraid of taking that next step. Maybe I haven't been consistent, yeah. you know, with my marketing because I feel like a um, imposter. Mm -hmm. well, and then you ask another question. Why do I feel like an imposter? Yeah. And then eventually I think you get to a layer of something that you can, that you can actually um, put an action step into because it's, it's really a lie. Yeah. We're not failures. You really I don't look, sorry. I don't look at other women as like, Ooh, like if a woman had to file bankruptcy and close a business and then she down the road started something else new, I'd be like, she's so brave. She's such an inspiration. I'm not like, Ooh, is that a good idea? Cause she failed at her last business. Like I never think that. Hmm. That's so good because she didn't fail. She learned so much that I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. And yeah, I, I love that because imagine getting a text. If you were like, imagine just like a friendship or an entrepreneurship, you know, you, you have entrepreneurial friends that you talk about your business to. And imagine saying, having closed a sale in two months and your friend being like, hell yeah, like that's amazing. And you would be like, what, why? Now we can figure out what's wrong with your sales process because before you didn't know. And like, imagine like a support, a way of supporting each other in that way of like being like, you're growing. This is so good. Your failure is actually the best thing that ever happened to you. And like, instead of it being a knock or a discoloration of our character. Yeah. Because we get so like this tunnel vision focused. Mm. And so that's what I'm talking about. Like the feminine support that we can give each other. Like all females need support. Mm -hmm. That's why women's circles have been from the beginning of time. We've just lost them. And so that's why I'm creating it because when we are sounding boards off of each other, we're going to hear and feel and see things differently. And then it gives you just enough beautiful juice to go back to the drawing board. Even if it's just that day and be like, okay, mm. inspiration. I love it. So that's another big takeaway, guys. Let's all, if you're in my energetic ladies group chat, let's just like drop our failures and like cheer each other on for the learning opportunity God has given us through those mm -hmm. failures. Um, oh, Amy, I'm going to put all of Amy's information in the show notes, guys. You can fo follow her salon, her Instagram, keep up with the bangs, maybe order a pair for yourself or find a salon near you that has the bangs. Um, Thank you so much, Amy, for coming on the podcast. Obviously, I could talk to you for, we talk usually for four hours, guys. So <laughs> I could talk to you forever, but um, thank you so much. And thank I will you. talk to you guys soon. Thanks for having me. Of course. Bye. Bye.